Welcome to the Thrive Today podcast. I'm Natalie Bourne. I'm the media host for Thrive Today and the founder of Innovation Meets Leadership. Our primary focus at Thrive Today is to help you identify the authority of God's word and connect it to your success at work. Well, today we're speaking with Pastor Rodney Gage. Rodney is the founding pastor and also the lead pastor of Rethink Life Church. He is the author of seven books, including his latest two books co-written with his wife, Michelle. His newest book, The Double Win, was released in April 2022. Welcome to the podcast, Rodney. Well, thank you so much, Natalie. It's a, it's an honor to be a part of this podcast and looking forward to giving a lot of encouragement to those listening. Okay, so I have a secret um, that I told you before we hit record, but my husband and I actually read your article together, which I usually don't read Thrive Magazine with my husband, but he was really interested in your article as I told him I was interviewing you. And as we cracked it open and got into your article called The Journey, um, he just, I mean, it was interesting. We just started this entire conversation on how relevant this was for even just where we're at right now. And so I thought it could be awesome to take our ladies today on a journey as well and tell them a little bit about why you decided to write this article and then lean into some of the the principles that you've put into this piece yeah absolutely well you know the book that you refer to called the double win really unpacks eight specific questions that are really thought-provoking questions that helps people you know kind of get beyond the surface to really get inside their heart and have those conversations. A lot of times they're internalizing, but maybe they haven't really verbalized, you know, with somebody. And I think these questions really help um, bring, I think, if anything, a sense of direction along with motivation to act on maybe what it is intuitively they're sensing or they're feeling in their heart. And then also just to bring clarity to a lot of the complexities and confusion that a lot of people struggle with, you know, when it comes to career decisions, you know, family related decisions, all of these things that affect, you know, work life or work home environments. So this specific article, we're dealing with something that I refer to as the dream question in the book. And it really gets into the heart of those who are just processing, pondering all of those what ifs, Mm -hmm. you know, of what would it look like if we did this? You know, what would need to change if we decided to take this step or take that risk to pursue something that really is in our hearts? Because a lot of times we'll talk about it, we'll think about it, we'll pray about it, we'll see counsel about it, but we never act on it. Yes. And so what we want to do and this and really this article helps kind of give, you know, I think some some structure to ways that they can begin building on what's in their heart mm-hmm. to actually see become a reality so that that dream, you know, doesn't have to be something that is out here in this abyss or the greater distance of right. the future, but it actually can become a reality. Well, I love that you kind of kicked off saying, believe in yourself. And I think that is the first step to, to walk into a dream that you have or a vision that, that God's put in your heart is to actually believe in yourself. I think so often we sell ourselves short and therefore we never get to the next part of the journey, which is taking that first step. And I'd love to just unpack that a little bit and what that, what you think that looks like to truly believe in yourself. Absolutely. We're always second guessing ourselves. You know, am am I, am I too young? Am I too old? Are my best days behind me? You know, am, am I educated enough? Do I have what it takes? Am I qualified? You know, and so we're always processing, we're internalizing a lot of these things, which is only undermining who God made us to be, you know? So a lot of times we're our own worst critic. A lot of times we have a hard time maybe living up to our own expectations of ourselves. And sometimes for the fear of the, whether it's fear, fear of failure or the fear of the unknown or the fear of whatever somebody else may have said about us or that may have planted a seed of doubt in our hearts or minds, you know, we, we begin to question ourselves. And so, yeah, without question, we have to let go of the limiting beliefs 
that maybe the enemy uses in our lives to sabotage those dreams or those hopes or aspirations. And most importantly, see ourselves the way God sees us. Because if God is on our side, if he's for us and he's with us and God uniquely designed and created us, we have a divine design. And so if he's for us and he's with us and he made us to make a difference, then man, we have all of the confidence we should ever need to step out and do who God, be what God has called us to be and do what God has called us to do to make a greater difference with our lives. And so, yeah, it starts with believing in ourselves. Well, I love when you said we have a divine design. And I also think about the fact that if there is a dream in your heart, because you are uniquely designed by God, he's probably put it there in the first place. And so sometimes we feel like it's just us or it's just our dream or it's something we've thought up. But oftentimes it's God placing that desire in our heart in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah, God, I often say what God initiates, he orchestrates. Mm -hmm. And I think when God puts that initiative in our heart, you know, when he puts births that dream, you know, of what could be or what should be that picture of the future, well, God is going to bring that to pass. He's going to align people places, opportunities, timing, all of those things. God is in control of those things, but we have to be willing to step out and say, God, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to allow you to take what you've put in my heart to become a reality. And that's that's a part of the journey. That's the journey you you emphasize at the very beginning because it really is. It's It's a journey of faith. It's a journey of belief. You know, it's a journey of expectancy and as long as we are walking in sync with God and following his lead and our, his plans and purpose, purposes for our lives, God, God's not going to let us fail. Yeah. So, you know, it's a part okay. of us, you know, just taking it one day at a time and allowing that journey to be just that, a true journey where we enjoy the process rather than being fixated on the destination. That's so hard. <laughs> I feel I feel like if anything, getting people to slow down and understand that the journey is part of the enjoyment, that's hard. Because I think that um, I was just actually listening to this other podcast and they were saying, hey, success is a, is a myth. The journey is is part of your, your success and significance. And so, so often we say that thing over there, when I reach there, I'll, I'll have arrived. And oftentimes what happens is the marker moves then (laughs) once you get to that place. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's often referred to as the when and then thinking, you know, it's like when this happens, then I'll be happier, then I'll be content or fulfilled or whatever. But yeah, sometimes that can be that, (laughs) that dangling carrot, that elusive thing that, you know, that we're chasing after. And I think, you know, we can't sacrifice or forfeit our marriage our time with our children, and most importantly, along the, along the way of pursuing whatever it is that we're pursuing, we also have to realize who are we becoming in the process, because who we are becoming is actually more important than what we actually accomplish. Wow. So there are a lot, there are a lot of people. slow down on that one. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of people who accomplish a lot of great things, but at the end of the day, you know, their character, mm-hmm. you know, what potentially was sacrificed because of whatever they were trying to achieve, but no, who are we becoming? And at the end of the day, when we arrive at whatever that so-called destination is, can we, can we truly say that, you know what, I've become a better, stronger, healthier person in the process of pursuing the dream that, you know, God put in my heart. Because at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's what we desire is we want to, we want to be someone generationally, you know, that even our children, grandchildren can say, that's how I want to finish. I want to finish strong. You know, I want to have my testimony and I want to have my character Mm -hmm. and I want to have a legacy, you know, that others can be, can build their their future, their hopes and dreams upon as well because of the foundation that was established. So that's That's so so important. That's so good. You know, okay, so we're going to skip around a little bit and all of our OCD people, it's going to drive them crazy, but they got (laughs) to go read the article for themselves. Um, So when we look at 
one of the things you talk about number three in the in here is setting benchmarks. And I would love to to lean into that just a little bit more when we think about a dream. What does setting benchmarks look, look like? Yeah, benchmarks are the mile markers along the journey that gives you something to measure your progress. You know, because you can have this lofty, ambitious goal or dream, and it could be, you know, a very audacious goal and dream. And it may take longer than what you ever anticipated, you know, than in terms of pulling it off or seeing it come to fruition. So along the way, we have to set realistic benchmarks that allow us to also celebrate the wins and sell, take the time to celebrate the little victories along the way. You know, again, we can't get so fixated on the big prize or whatever that is, you know, um, that we don't celebrate the little successes and celebrate the people that helped us get from point A to point B. Because we can't go it alone. We got to have other people around us. And it could be our spouse, it could be our children, it could be coworkers, it could be friends. But we cannot just blow past you know, specific areas that are moving in the direction to get us closer to where we desire to be. But when we reach those benchmarks, we need to take the time to celebrate those and to recognize our achievements along the way. And so, and that helps take, it's kind of like the old saying, you bite, you, you, you eat an elephant one bite size at a time. And that's kind of the way it is with a long-term vision or goal that we have we have to break it down and work backwards so we can celebrate those milestones and benchmarks along the way. Well, and what I see that's so important about that is um, oftentimes, you know, I think about, I used to be the the New Year's resolution person and I would write down, you know, the things that I wanted to accomplish. And I, my celebration was checking it off the list and that didn't really, you know, that's not really exciting. And so I love the idea of, of building in pieces or parts where you can go celebrate that thing that you've accomplished. And I think that helps us to slow down and look back and reflect on how, how hard, whatever it was we accomplished was and how much of a big deal it is. And so often we just keep kind of going down that checklist and we don't ever stop and really look at how far we've come. And I think looking backward to understand where we're headed is an important part of that celebration journey. Yeah. Because if we, if we, we have, a, it's, it's, it's kind of like, you can look at it one of two ways. You can either focus on how far you have to go or you can focus on how far we've actually gone. You know, we can, we can, we can say, look, look at what we've accomplished so far, or we can, we can dismiss that and say, but look how far we have to go. So we have to keep the big picture in perspective, but at the same time, we have to celebrate those milestones and realize that, you know what, Hey, we're making progress. You know, it may look different. It may feel different. It may have taken a little longer than what we thought, but we're making progress. And that's worthy of celebrating and, and recognizing that because that fuels more motivation to keep moving forward to pursue that future dream. I love that. Talk to me a little bit about balancing uh, realistic versus kind of just that reaching. I think and I think most people fall into one of two categories. Either they really have to be prodded to not procrastinate, or there's other people that just grab the reins and you really have to be the brakes for them and say, hey, you, you got to sleep, you got to eat. And so how do we balance that dream that we want to reach with also being, you know, balancing out family and these other areas of our life that are so important? Well, I heard someone once say, I don't know it was John Maxwell or, or, you know, who actually coined this. My father-in-law actually used to say something very similar, but basically the statement is it's not what you do in a day. It's what you do daily. Wow. And I think we get so fo focused again on what we're accomplishing throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But what's more important is again, who we are becoming along the way and what do our habits look like? What are the daily non-negotiables in our, in our attempt to move forward in whatever purpose we're pursuing? Mm -hmm. But for example, like in the book, we even talk about in, in a section called priorities, you know, we talk about what would it look like if you narrowed your life down to five things that you do every single day. Wow. And if you can just, if you can, 
commit to accomplishing those five things, whatever those things, it could be exercise, Mm -hmm. it could be having quality time, you know, with your spouse or with your children, your family, you know, it, it could be, you know, um, just a personal connection that you make with somebody on a relational level, you know, it could be a number of different things, but, but it's up to us to identify what those key areas are And I'll build those daily disciplines and routines. Those become systems, if you will, in our everyday lives. And that's the compound effect that over time bears fruit. Over time has great dividends and rewards because we have been faithful and consistent, practicing without fail those non-negotiables and those priorities that help us along the way. Mm -hmm. And so we can't, we can't, there's no shortcuts. And we have to be committed to the process of doing things consistently and faithfully day in and day out. Well, that, that resonated with me because I have a black thumb when it comes to um, greenery or any type of plants, but I could see, I could actually see the visual uh, of what you were talking about when you said, Hey, consistently, I just saw somebody either consistently watering something or consistently, you know, pulling up weeds. Eventually you're going to have, like you said, that fruit tree, you're going to have that result. So in your article, you have these five dream questions and they were so powerful um, that my husband and I actually committed, we were going to sit down together and, and work on these questions. So I just thought they were so cool. And I want to mention a couple of them. One of them is uh, what are the gifts and talents and other resources God has put in your hands? That is such a, an interesting, but also a very powerful question to ask. Yeah. Well, we have that takes time to do some self reflection and some evaluation when it comes to what we truly are best at, you know, in terms of the way God has wired us and our unique talents and abilities, passions that we have that are unique to us. And sometimes people who know us well, you know, whether it's a family member or a very dear friend, a trusted friend a lot of times can speak into those areas to help affirm certain areas that where we're really just gifted. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're our own worst critic, but somebody else can see something in us and say, you know what you do, you know, whatever it is, you do that exceptionally well Mm -hmm. and it comes natural to you. Or it might be something that just, you know, is a passion that you have and it just resonates. Everybody sees it. Everybody feels it because it's something that is really just deeply rooted in your heart, in your spirit. And so, you know, sometimes, and it goes back to that whole believing in yourself, you know, uh, conversation we had earlier. Sometimes, again, we question ourselves and our own abilities or or whatever. But when we can really build on our strengths and we can really develop and hone in on those skills that really are unique to us. It's kind of like the old saying says, there's riches in your niches. So when you find your niche, when you find that one thing or that, that area that is very unique to what you do well, and it just comes natural, becomes obvious to everybody else in the process as well. Wow. But that's what we have to build upon. And that's what I believe God will use because now we're operating in the sweet spot, you know, of our lives. Yeah, that's awesome. I love I love the way that you um, laid that out for us to really think about that. Now, there are four other questions and I really want people to go read the article. So I'm not going to read them to them, but but these might be five total questions for you to sit with after reading this article. And it may not, you may not be able to figure it all out in an hour, but it's something to start walking through. I want to talk a little bit about your new book that you wrote in April called Double Win. Well, the whole purpose of this book, Natalie, is, is really to help people do a lot of what we're talking about. And that is just reflect. It is yeah. to really sit down and think about the two most important areas of their life in terms of where they spend the majority of their time. That's obviously at home and at work. And so we all hear a lot about work-life balance and a lot of people are trying to find balance in life and, you know, these rhythms and routines that help make life, you know, better. And we've got the latest gizmo and gadget apps of, 
you know, time efficiency and, th- and all of those things are good and great. But what this does, this these eight specific questions help us get a little deeper than just all of the coolest, latest, greatest gadgets on saving time. It's really more in the area of helping us pull out what's in our heart and pull out maybe what we need to restructure in our lives Mm -hmm. that allows us to be able to win both at home and at work. And just to give you a little bit of an example of what I'm talking about. So you have so many, and I know a lot of the audience who's listening and watching and subscribe to the Thrive Magazine, obviously are females. Yeah. What's interesting is that, um, a lot of studies have been recently um, released as it relates to women in the workplace. For example, 40% of working parents are now looking for a new job. And that's interesting to me, 40% of working parents. And then <clears throat> here's another stat. A lack of child care causes businesses to lose an estimated of $12.7 billion annually because of absenteeism. So therefore, you have a lot of women who, unfortunately, will have to call in sick because of a childcare situation. You have a lot of women who struggle because of the work-life demand of trying to juggle, obviously, the domestic needs and challenges at home. At the same time, you know, fulfill the expectations at work. And, and because of the financial stress and pressure that, you know, they feel because of both of those worlds often collide. It's very, very difficult. And so that's why a lot of not just both male, but also even females are both processing a lot when it comes to, is there a better course of action? Is there a better way? Do I have to sacrifice, you know, my family for this career, this job or vice versa? Do I have to give up my career goals and aspirations for my family? And I don't think you have to, it's not an either or. I believe it can be a both and. So I think you can win both at home and at work, but it may require some restructuring and reprioritizing our lives in order for us to win in both of those spaces of our lives. And I think when we can get to that place, what that will allow us to do, we'll find a greater sense of joy and fulfillment and purpose in at home and at work because now we're living out the double win in our lives because we're able to feel like I can do both and I can do both well. And it's bringing fulfillment and greater purpose to my life. Wow. That's some of those stats were astounding. And, and I think that you're probably getting a, a standing ovation from the women of saying, yes, yes, yes. That's exactly, you know, how it's been and, and, and how that's felt. And so I think that that's brilliant just to bring that to the table for us to talk about. And I think even why it's even more important for us to get our hands on these types of materials and be able to sit with these things and ask ourselves these questions. And also, where can we where can we stop doing things? I think the stop doing thing or the, the no is so powerful. Um, it's not just always saying yes to everything. It's, it's that re- reevaluation, that prioritization to say, what, what can I lay down as I look to pick different things up? Yeah. You know, there are so many things in, in parents. I know struggle. I, I struggled my own life. Um, you know, when my wife and I, our children are younger, but we all want our kids to be exposed to the best. We want them to have the best. We want yeah. them to be able to say, we want to be able to say that, Hey, we did all that we could to give them all the opportunities. Yeah. But the problem with that, that's kind of that dangling carrot, that myth, that elusive thing that we chase a lot of times, and it leads to nowhere. And sometimes it leads to frustration and stress and challenges because we've overcommitted ourselves. And so usually there's a gap between what we say is important and what we actually commit to. And I often say, you know, a good thing can become a bad thing if it keeps us from the best thing. And what we have to do is we have to just really stay focused on what is best for me, what is best for my marriage, what is best for my children, because all those other things may be good things. But if they're but if those things are going to compete or ultimately even diminish what is best, then 
I'm going to have to say no to those things mm -hmm. so I can say yes to the better things. And so those are just some things that I think, again, the book will help kind of unpack a lot of those emotions and help give clarity to some decisions that people need to make. That's powerful. Cause I, as I talk to a lot of women, they're at a crossroad right now with some of the things you mentioned. And so I just, I just think getting their hands on this material could be so, so powerful. I know we're going to sit down and, and do some of this together. Can you um, tell our, our listeners, where can they find you? Where can they learn more about you? Well, we have a website called thewinningfamily.com. So they can just go to thewinningfamily.com. My wife and I actually, um, we have a, a mentoring program for couples and for parents to help strengthen their marriage, to help strengthen, strengthening their uh, parenting uh, skills and relationships with their children, just to help families win. That's our passion. It's our heart. And uh, we have something called the Double Win Club. So they can go to the doublewinclub.com. So either the winningfamily.com or the doublewinclub.com. And both of those websites are tools and resources that we've made available. And the Double Win Club is kind of our mentoring uh, program where we do like a monthly live uh, one hour call with uh, marriages, couples and parents to help to strengthen, you know, marriage and parenting uh, areas in their life. Um, we usually take a theme and then we have Q&A. Uh, we do something that we send out on the uh, first Monday every week. It's called the winning word and it's a word for the week to kind of help shift the atmosphere of your home and your relationships. So a lot of little things that we do to help just strengthen the overall work and home environment um, to help families win because I know many are struggling Sometimes we feel like we're losing ground. We're fighting a, a crisis of values in our culture, in our society, and it weighs heavily on the hearts of a lot of parents. And they're confused, and they are looking for tools and resources and, and really direction or a plan yeah. to help them with their children to navigate through a lot of the complexities that they're facing today. That's powerful. And thank you so much for creating that these platforms. I, I really believe that if um, our ladies will will click on these links in the show notes, we'll put them in there. We'd love for you to just go there and avail yourself to these resources because um, I, as, I, as I talk to people over and over again, this is we're in a crossroads. We're in a season where people are just wanting to rethink everything. And so I think that this could be a, a powerful Thanks. conversation starter for your family, for um, you to do with a friend, but to, to really begin this journey. And I think it's a beautiful thing. So thank you so much for your time today, Rodney. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Natalie. It's always an honor. And uh, thank you for all that you guys are doing as well. Well, to our listeners, thank you so much for joining the Thrive Today podcast. If you haven't had a chance to get in community, I want to ask you a question. What are you waiting for? Head over to thrivetoday.com. You can check out the magazine that we talked about today, and you can also get into community with like-minded believers. We'll see you next time.